Welcome back. Who will be the next governor of Oklahoma? That question will be answered in November. Today we visit with each of the gubernatorial candidates who will be running in the general election that is coming up November 6th. And joining me now is Libertarian candidate Chris Powell. Mr. Powell, thank you so much for coming in. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to come down and talk to you. Thank you, sir. Let's start with the state budget. Um, it, it's remaining an issue. It seems like some of the reports from the state indicate there may be a $167 million shortfall in the 2019 fiscal year. So what is your plan for this budget to try to alleviate it and try to fix the issue? Well, I think that we've got a lot, an awful lot of waste and mismanagement in our budget. And we also have a great deal of corporate welfare and special interest uh, in, uh, incentives and uh, tax uh, tax breaks that we can look at uh, trimming a lot of those. For instance, the Incentive Evaluation Commission reviews all of the programs that are admitted to be incentives, and that's al almost uh, half a billion dollars. And that's not counting the programs that don't have a specific dollar amount attached. We have a lot of these what I would, incentive sounds like luxury items to me, we can cut that so that we can fund our core services that all the people of Oklahoma want. In half of our coverage area, the unemployment rate continues to decrease, but in half of our area, they're above that number. What can the state do to bring in more jobs and even specifically bring in jobs for southeastern Oklahoma? Well, I think that uh, one of the things that we need to do is we need to look at everything that causes problems for small businesses and sole proprietorships and entrepreneurs who would like to have their own business and look at all those impediments and get rid of anything that is a barrier to entering the economic marketplace. Uh, we've you know, we have stifled a lot of growth in rural Oklahoma by having these rules that are really designed more for uh, the metro areas uh, and thought up by people there. So, you know, we need to roll some of that back. We need to give people the freedom to get into business if they want to and hire their neighbors for those businesses. Let's talk education now. Uh, the teacher walkout, a, a big movement that happened earlier this year in Oklahoma and with the state of education in Oklahoma. We've seen teachers and we know teachers who have multiple jobs textbooks held together by duct tape. Uh, Two-part question for you here. With House Bill 1010XX that was passed, signed mm -hmm. into law by Governor Mary Fallon, is that something that you agree or disagree with? And what is your plan for education, especially with rural Oklahoma, a lot of consolidation, closures happening, and schools going to four-day weeks, four-day a week? Well, House Bill 1010XX was, I think everybody was happy that they finally did something, even if it wasn't uh, the best thing that could have been done or the optimal solution. And it certainly wasn't the optimal solution. I don't think anybody thinks it was. Uh, the, if I had been governor, I don't, uh, at that time, it would not have come to that. We would have come to a resolution that would have been better and would have been implemented sooner. Uh, you know, teachers certainly have a grievance about their pay, but I think if you ask any teacher, they will tell you that it's not all. That's not what it's all about. That's just a small part of it. Uh, there's a survey that's done by the State Department of Education every year in January, and over two thirds of the teachers, uh, former teachers that answered that survey, said it would take more than money to get them back in the classroom. That has a lot to do with the teacher's ability to run their classroom the way that they say, see fit. Uh, we control so much from 23rd and Lincoln in Oklahoma City, uh, we don't, it's as if we don't trust our teachers to teach. We need to empower teachers and parents by pushing authority and responsibility back down to the local level. Uh, and then when you get in, you know, consolidation is always something that people talk about. And there are probably places where we can do some consolidation of administration uh, things like that. Uh, I don't want to force local districts to do anything that they don't want to do, uh, but there may be some some amount of efficiencies there. But if you look at the district that has the least amount of its dollars going to the classroom, it's the biggest district in the state, Oklahoma City Public Schools. That's almost the size of a congressional district. It's got a 
organizational chart that looks like a Fortune 500 company, it cannot possibly be effective at responding to the individual communities uh, that it's supposed to serve because it's just too big. So, you know, in some ways we need to look at that and there's a lot of waste that goes on there because it's so large. Uh, we need perhaps some deconsolidation with some of these massive districts. So there's a lot of different things to do, but I think local people, uh, parents and teachers and students are the people who are involved in the education process and that's where there needs to be more decision making power. With rural hospitals, it seems uh, a lot of them are being threatened to close down. I believe the Oklahoman had a statistic that about 56% of those rural hospitals between 2009 and 2013 operated at a financial loss. So what is your plan for health care, and especially with those in the rural areas? Well, a, a big part of the problem with health care is something that we can't do a whole lot about, and that's that it's uh, so much of that policy is set at the federal level. Uh, we're using insurance, which is a tool, financial tool to manage risk, to pay routine costs, and it's something that drives prices up and up and up. Uh, so, you know, there's only so much we can do at the state level, but what we can do is we can uh, try to uh, create more providers, uh, s such as by allowing nurse practitioners full practice authority, something that they have in 22 other states. Uh, we can uh, remove barriers to entry into the medical workplace uh, where we're able to do so. We can protect uh, some free market reforms like surgery centers of Oklahoma and direct primary care where those providers operate outside of the insurance system on a cash basis. Now I understand that not everybody is going to be able to access that, but as more and more people do access that, uh, that market action is going to work as something that will reduce prices over time uh, and that's going to help health care and uh, the medical industry as a whole to have something working against the insurance driver of prices up and up and up. So those are some things that we can do. It's really something that to have a real good long-term fix is going to have to be done on the federal level. Mr. Powell, thank you for coming and sharing your views and your time. We really do appreciate it. Early voting starts November 1st for the general election on November 6th. And as always, we encourage everyone to exercise their right to vote. Thank you so much for joining us for News 12 Forum. Remember, for your latest news, sports, and weather, you can head on over to KXII.com or find us on social media. Until next time, make it a great week.